Hi, and thanks for tuning in to Sweet Talk with Taylor. Today we're going to be talking about the powerful application for payment tool that Construction Suite offers, which will generate the AIA G702 and G703 form for you. This will save you valuable entry time creating these forms, as well as eliminate any mistakes that might be made from manual entry, because we pull your information directly from QuickBooks. Before you can start with the application for payment, you do need to ensure that you have at least one estimate and one invoice in your customer job in QuickBooks. In this case, we do have multiple invoices, as well as our main estimate from Construction Suite, a change order estimate from Construction Suite, and a credit memo that's the result of a negative change order within Construction Suite. Once we verify that we do have at least one estimate and one invoice ready to go, we can come back over to Construction Suite, access our QuickBooks integration tab, and in the Application for Payment drop-down, choose to create an application for payment. This will start our Application for Payment wizard. On the first screen, you'll see the number of applications that you have currently created, the number that are pending, the total amount applied for, and the total remaining or your balance to finish. In this case, this is our first application for payment, so the only thing that we have a numerical value for is the total remaining, which is the same as our project total for the entire estimate. We can continue give the application a number which will by default increment uh, starting at 1 and going to 2, 3, 4 as you create new applications. You can choose a period to for the invoices you want to include, the contract date, uh, the project and client have already been populated for us, and then you can choose an architect. You can also choose a few other options as far as how the information will display on the continuation sheet, whether you would like to omit the category names or to use item descriptions instead of names. And once you've selected your preferences, you can continue. The next screen is where you're going to include the invoices that are included in this application for payment. So in this case, we do have three invoices currently involved in our customer job in QuickBooks. Now, you don't have to include all of the current invoices. The period to date that you selected will determine which invoices are actually shown here. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and include our first invoice here for the first stage payment of our job, as well as this change order invoice we have generated for $1,200. Once we've selected those, we can continue to the next screen which will take us to our pending change orders. Now, these change orders have been accepted in the Construction Suite estimate and sent over to QuickBooks, but they have not been included on a current application for payment. In this case, we're going to go ahead and select our plumbing fixtures change order to include on this application and leave the credit memo for later. If you continue, you'll see that you do have the option to access some materials presently stored. We're getting a pop-up letting us know that multiple estimates have been found for this job and ask if we want to continue. In this case, we absolutely do. That's just indicating that we do have both the main estimate that we sent over from the construction suite estimate, as well as the change order estimate that we have then created after that was accepted. So in order to get both of those estimates contributing to the total, which we definitely want, we need both estimates and we would like to continue. As I mentioned, if you have any materials stored and would like to apply retainage on those materials or have a value for those materials stored that you're charging your client, you can put that in here, but otherwise, you can continue without messing with this at all. Once you've continued through that screen, you will have the option to accept or reject your application. But most importantly, before you do that, you do have the option to preview this to make sure that it is complete and is detailed in the way that you would like. So if we choose to view this application for payment, it will give us an Excel preview. Here you can see that we have our AIA G702 form, the application for payment. And this will automatically populate all of our information from Construction Suite, the owner, the contractor, uh, the project that we have, as well as an architect if we were to include it, the contract date, period two, etc. You see that all of these lines have been filled in for us, the original contract sum, the net change by change orders, and the new contract sum to date, the total completed and stored to date, which is going to be pulled from the sum of the invoices that we have included, the retainage on these invoices that we have included, the total earned less retainage, uh, the amount from previous certificates for payment, which in this case is zero because this is our first one, and then from that less previous certificates for payment, you will get the current payment due. After that, you will see the balance to finish, which is what you have not yet billed for, and then a summary of all the additions and deductions to the job, which will be the change orders and credit memos that you have applied. Once you've reviewed this and verified that everything is correct, you can continue to the continuation sheet, on this G703 form, you will see the description of the work broken down by category and subcategory. You'll see the scheduled value that's pulled from the QuickBooks estimate. 
Uh, any previous app applied payments will be shown here, but since this is our first application, we have none. You will then see the amount applied for this period. So this is the total of all of the invoiced amounts that you have included on this application for each one of these items. Materials presently stored, if you chose to put any values in the, uh, that option in the wizard. The total completed and stored to date, which will combine the previous applications and this period. It will give you the percentage complete, the balance to finish, and then the retainage withheld if you have applied that. Now as you step through these sheets, you will see that you can continue through the estimate to see different items. And as you get to the bottom, you will see the totals for the scheduled value, uh, the work completed, both this period and previously, total completed and stored to date, percent complete, balance to finish, and retainage. So once you've reviewed that and realized that everything does look good, you can come back here to accept this as a pending application. When you click finish, it will prompt you to save the application to your job, so you can go ahead and save that and the continuation sheet as well, and it'll let you know the application has been recorded. Now if you go back to generate a second application for payment, the steps are going to be exactly the same, except for you'll see here that we do have one application previously generated, and that one is pending at the moment for this amount applied for. It'll give us our balance to finish, and as soon as we review this and click next, it will ask if we want to accept that previously pended application for payment. In this case, they must be confirmed in order to generate a second one, so we will select yes. You'll see that this is now listed as application number two. All of our other information is going to remain the same in this case, so we will continue. When you get back to the invoices, you will see that the two previous invoices we have included are still present, but they are grayed out, so you cannot include them. This ensures that you will not invoice for an item twice. So in this case, we just have this one invoice left to include. We will do that one here and choose to continue. On the next screen, same thing with the change order we included on the last application. It is still present, so you can see the amount that you have included on previous applications, but you cannot include it again. In this case, we'll go down to the credit memo and select to include this $850 credit. Once again, we do have multiple estimates and we would like to continue. We don't have any materials stored or retained on those materials. So once we step through, we can view this second application for payment. You'll see here that our net change by change orders has now been updated to include that $1,200 change order and the $850 credit memo. The contract sum to date has been updated. Total completed and stored to date is the sum of all invoices that have been included on an application at this point. Retainage, total earned less retainage, and then it subtracts the previous certificate for payment to get the payment due, which is the sum of all of the invoices that you have included on this application. Now you get your new balance to finish, the new summary of the additions and deductions and the net changes, and you can continue to the continuation sheet again. On this G703, the only thing that you'll notice that will really be different on the second, third, and so on applications is you will now have a previous application column, which will total the invoiced amounts from all of the previous applications for payment, so you can compare that to this period, and then get the total completed and stored to date. Now in this case, we have a 55% complete because we had a 30% stage payment and then a 25% stage payment. You don't have to do this in stage payments. You can invoice for whatever amounts you would like, but it will show the total percent complete from all previous applied invoices. You'll then have a balance to finish and the retainage withheld. And again, if you go to the bottom, you can see the totals of all of these columns. Once you've reviewed that, you can come back here, choose to accept this finish, save it back to the job, and it will let you know it has been recorded. Now if you would like to review your applications at any time, you can come back to this QuickBooks integration tab, choose the application for payment dropdown, and choose to view applications for payment. This will give you a summary of how many applications you have currently generated, the total amount applied, the total remaining or balance to finish, and then it will give you a breakdown of each of the previously generated applications, their status, the date created, and the amount they were created for. If you would like to view any of these again to see them, see them in detail, just highlight one, select view, and it will bring up that preview that we had just generated. Once again, all of the information on that powerful G702 and G703 AIA application for payment that we offer is going to be pulled from your QuickBooks information. We do have some additional Sweet Talk videos that inform you how to get that information into QuickBooks, but as for today, thanks for tuning in to our tutorial on the AIA application for payment.